Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about one of my favorite exercises for the upper glute max, and that is the drop lunge. So I'm gonna be walking you through setup and execution as well as different ways that we can add stability to the movement and even if we should be doing this with weights in both hands or one hand and what the differences between the two are. That way we can get into the gym and we can train hard, but also train smart. So there are a few things when it comes to this exercise. When we are trying to overload more of the upper glute fibers, we need a few things. One thing we need is we need hip flexion. So hip flexion is closing the gap between your stomach and your quads, meaning this. This motion here, that's creating hip flexion. This is hip extension, this is hip flexion. So at the bottom of the squat, what are we doing? Well, we are creating hip flexion so that we can lengthen the glutes. So we do need hip flexion for this exercise, but more than hip flexion, we do need the leg to come slightly in so that it is midline with the body. So think of your knee being midline with your body. What that's gonna do is here, just bringing it up like this, that's it lengthening out the glute max, but more that midsection. If we want to lengthen out more of that upper section, then we need hip flexion with slight adduction here. So coming in like this. So that's why upper glute lateral um, division exercises need to be done unilaterally, meaning one leg at a time. So next, we're gonna set up with our little step up. We don't need a huge step up, just a very slight one will do the trick. So putting the working leg up, remember when we are in full hip flexion, we need the leg to come in slightly. So we need to bring it more this way while keeping our hips straight forward. Do you see that? And then do you notice where my back leg is? My back leg is going to be directly behind this leg, okay? So when I'm going through this motion, I'm gonna be dropping this back leg behind this one. I mean, it's gonna be coming back further, but it's gonna be coming right in line with this one. And what that does is it actually causes a bit of a hip shift so we can lengthen out that upper lateral division of the glute max. How awesome is this? So you can do this with two dumbbells, or if you feel like you're trying to go through this motion with two dumbbells and you feel like, oh, I'm losing my balance, I don't know how to keep my balance, then one thing we can do is you can set this up by the wall, you can set it up by a bench and then you're gonna use the hand that's on the same side to hold something, whether I said it's the wall or the bench, whatever. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the dumbbell. This is called contralateral. So this is the working leg, and we're holding it with the opposite arm, okay? So what this does actually is it can accentuate the tension that we're placing on the upper lateral glute division. So we have seen that in studies with contralateral that we see a little bit more activation of the upper glutes. So if you want to accentuate it, plus get stability, this is a great way to do that. But you don't have to. If you have really good technique and form and stability, you can do it both hands. That way we can really, really increase the load, okay? But I do like using this setup as well. So remember that we're going to take a step back behind the working foot and then come down and then come back up. You don't need to add any 
of this action or anything like that, step right behind and then come back. And remember when we're all through this movement, we're trying to keep the pelvis pointed forward. A step back. Let me show you what it looks like from behind. So once again, we are stepping that back foot back in line with the front working leg. You don't have to go weird and crazy like this. That's not going to help. It will actually hinder the movement. Just step back, forward like that. So next I want to walk you through what this is like from the side, okay? Because I know a lot of people will want to set up with their foot slightly in to midline, right? And then what they're gonna do is they're just gonna drop down and up. And that's not what we're doing. We're focusing on pushing the hips back and forward to create that hip flexion. So push the hips back and then that really lengthens it and forward, back and forward. Another question I get is how much should I bend my knee? Bending your knee, more, the more you bend it, the more you're going to incorporate quads. If you keep your knee straighter, the more it's just going to send the load to your butt. So if you feel like maybe you already have the quads of your dream and you want to limit the amount that we are working them, and you want to strictly just work on your glutes, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure throughout this movement, we have more of a hinge back and forward like this. We're not getting a whole lot of bend at the knee. If you though are like, Hey, I just want to hit my lower body. I want to work my quads. I want to work my upper glutes with this exercise. Then, with that one, we do want to get, we'll set up here, and we want to bend more at the knee. That's the difference, okay? So just very slight modifications will actually change what you're working, more or less what, you, what muscles you're bringing in. So hopefully, that breakdown has really, really helped you know the key components of this movement. We've got to create hip flexion, but not just hip flexion. We need that adduction. Then we need to say, okay, so we've created that. We'll take this foot and we'll step it behind and in line with this foot. Then depending on how much quad, you want is how much your knee will bend. I want a ton of quad. I'm going to allow myself to sit into it like that and get more or less uh, quad. This can be used to add external stability while you learn this movement. I really encourage people to do this, um, holding the dumbbell with just one hand and getting external stability really getting the flow of this movement down really, really well. And then you can kind of bring it to holding two dumbbells, going through the motion, really then focusing on, now we're going to focus on really increasing the weight from week to week, month to month, depending on your strength and your level of progression with this movement.